Hello. Okay, so you probably noticed that there is no template project to download, and that's because part of today will be spent. Um, sorry, my mouse is freaking out here. Will be spent setting up the project. That is the primary or one of the primary goals of today's video. So we are going to start our first network game today. Yay! All right. So the first thing we have to do, um, and it. Let's go to uh, edit player project settings player. Sorry, it's been a while. Um, and on the standalone one right here, the PC Max, we want to make sure we run in background. This is very important. If we don't run in background and you try testing, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment, then you are going to figure it's just not going to work very nicely for you. So we want to run in the background. All right, that is enough of that. The other thing, well, we'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create some assets. Create a folder, uh, we'll do scenes. And we're gonna do create folder player. Inside here, we're gonna have a folder for prefab. Now you may ask, why am I being so nitpicky? You really need to get in the habit of having a well-organized uh, asset folder. If you don't, it will bring death to your project. Trust me, I've learned this from a bad experience. So a couple of things we're gonna have to do here. So we have this set up. We're gonna come back to this in a moment. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do game object, create empty, and we're gonna call this a network manager. sounds foreboding. This is going to be the primary mechanism that we use to connect and disconnect and tell whether or not we're the server, we're the client, or the host, which is a server and the client together. So if you're a player and the server, then you are a host. And we're going to do this right now by using a default network manager. Now, eventually we're going to make our own, but we'll just say network manager right now. And then we're going to also add under network. Sorry, that was under network. I kind of went fast there. So under add component network, network manager, we're also going to add network manager HUD. Now this is an ugly kind of just get it working HUD. Uh, we're going to end up making our own HUD later, but we'll use it for now. All right. So here we have our, we have our project kind of set up here. We're going to file, save scene. This is going to be our offline scene. And then we're gonna to have to make a new scene. And this is gonna be online. Now one sort of limitation with Unity's HL API is it doesn't do multiple scenes in the sense that one player can be in one scene, the other player can be in another scene. So this is one issue that is, is you're gonna to have to work around. And we'll talk a little bit later about different options for that. They aren't very good. So you really want to try to keep your game, your scope of your games into one scene. Really the only solution you have for a multi-scene project is have a separate server for each scene. And when you hit a boundary, you notify the client to what server to connect to and what your position will be. And then the client, and then the client disconnects and reconnects to another server. We'll talk about that later, but that's that's arduous. So it, you need to, it doesn't support a really pleasant multi-scene scenario. But most luckily for us, most multiplayer games are single scene. There are a few that aren't, but for the most part, most are single scene. Okay, so now now I've added them. There's a one more trick I have to do after I have my two different scenes. I have to go up here to edit, build settings. And I need to add in the order offline scene and then the online scene. If they are not in the build settings, then they will not, you cannot add them to your network manager. So you have to do this step first. So I click on network manager. Now I should be able to add my offline scene to the offline scene and the online scene to the online scene. 
The other thing I would recommend doing, and honestly, this is something we did in five point, or Unity 5.6, so it may no longer be necessary, but I prefer to use advanced configuration and I do unreliable sequence or no, 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 for channel one. So channel zero is your TCP connection. That's reliable. You don't want to touch that. Channel one is your unreliable. And I like to do unreliable sequence, not just unreliable. Again, this is something we did in uh, Unity 5.4, but it may not be necessary anymore, but it's something I, I recommend doing. Okay, so now we're, we're done here. We have, we can look at network information. We have local host, that's gonna be fine for now. It's gonna be this computer. We have a port, defaults, four sevens. Use web sockets will only be used if you're deploying to web HTML or to a, uh, a web page. If you do deploy to a web page, the server cannot run the web page, only the clients can. Bind to IP address, you have to have the specific IP address to bind to, not just, and then it will only bind to that one. Uh, in this case, I, I can't, I can only think of the reason you want this and should you have multiple NIC cards and you only want one connection for the game. A script CRC check will make sure you have the right, the most up-to-date script or the right version of the game. Uh, for debugging, you can take this off, but I recommend deploying with it. A max delay, I mean, I, I haven't really touched these. These are kind of just default values that actually work pretty well. Uh, we do want, we will allow packet fragmentation. Um, my mouse is just not working. There we go. And see what else. Max connections four. This will be the number of players. I don't really care to have just four players, so we'll do eight. Um, so what else do we need to do? Timeouts. So if I just, they're not going to use the network simulator. So everything else should be set here pretty well. Oh, spawn info. Yes. The other important one, and actually the more important one, the networking is the spawn. What's going to happen is when we connect. We're going to start and get a player prefab automatically or a player object and this will be spawned for us uh, when we do this though this object that gets spawned is the only object we will have the option to call is local and um, commands on we cannot call is local or use a command on any other game object in the game except for our player object so this player object is going to be kind of become something sacred to us eventually. We'll see, you'll see why. So whatever my player object is, this I have to put the prefab here for it to be made. If I want to spawn anything else, say bullets, items, treasure chests, etc., I have to add the objects in this list. This is the most common mistake out there, and if you get a weird error saying very like one client can't see that something being spawned you've most likely assuming your code is correct you most likely forgot to populate this list we'll come back to this when we do bullets so right now we can't really do much until we have a player prefab so we go ahead and save the game real quick say project make sure you save the scene because all of your network manager settings will be saved in the scene so just a heads up on that. Okay, so player, we're going to create a script and this will be our first network behavior script. It will also be our first player script. So my player controller. Let's call it network player and I'll explain why because we're gonna to get to a case where we're gonna say network or game piece and network player. Network player is gonna be the thing that the network manager spawns game piece is going to be the thing on the board right now they're going to be the same object but we're going to soon separate it. so let's bring this up all right so the first thing we're going to do is my mouse to work uh, we are going to say using unity engine dot networking similar to what we did with the UI but this time it's networking if we don't do this nothing else works so that's the first step we have to do the next thing we're going to do is we are no longer going to inherit from mono behavior so goodbye mono behavior sad face well not really because we are going to be using a network behavior which actually inherits from mono behavior so everything you had before exist now 
So nothing's changed except now you have more functionality. So what can you do with a network behavior? Hopefully you've already watched the concept video. We talked about different concepts. You have the command. This will be used for functions that we need to send a command. This can only be used be used on the player object. We have is here is local. Oh no, that's, oh no I'm not in a function. Here, I'll, I'll get we'll get back to that in a moment. We have uh, RPC client. This is for the server. We have sync vars. I don't know if I, I might be missing the capitalization on this. We'll, but this will synchronize different variables, which makes our life really easy. However, word of warning, once I do this, the sync var can only be changed by the server. And then I have uh, server only options, server only functions, and I have client only functions, which honestly I find very little use of these two because I'll explain later, but they are available to you. So what are we going to make? Uh, well, let's let's make a, a variable called public just so we can see it. I know normally we wouldn't use public, but we we'll use public int HP. Now HP is very important. It's going to depend on our game state. Therefore, therefore, we want this to be a sync var. This means HP can only change if it's done by the server. And we can give it a default value and the server will have that as a default value. So HP will only be changed when we uh, change it on the server. The client cannot change it. Or if the client does man manage to change it, it will not be respected across the network. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to have a public, again, I'm making it public so we can see it. My rig equals rigid body. Um, nope, sorry, I don't know what I'm doing that for. Rigid body, my rig. All right, so we're gonna have a rigid body on our object. That's how we're gonna, how we're gonna move it. But I don't care that to have this synchronized. So I'll explain why later. So anyone can, remember both server and client are gonna be running this code. Both the server and the client run start. Both the server and client run update. Both the server and client are going to run any on triggers or on collisions, etc. So this code is now running on every computer in the game with different uh, credentials. That's fine. What we're going to find out is only the server is going to actually use rigid body, but that's okay. We can make it. We can make it. Uh, everyone have that access to it. So if I wanted to be super uh, secretive about it, I could say I could do this. If is server, we'll do it this way. This I can use on any network behavior. And I can say my rig equals this dot game object dot get component rigid body. Now, if I do it this way, which I'll keep it this way, it's fine. Only the server, the instance of this player on the server will know what my rig is. Everyone else, my rig will be null. So keep this in mind. I can now only use my rig on the server. So every time I use my rig, I better have if is server wrapped around it or have it in a function with a server only tag. <clears throat> All right, so we don't have any UI stuff, so we don't have to worry about anything else. Other options I have is I can do if is client. So if I'm a client, and if it's the player, if it's a local player, I have if is local player, which becomes handy. So these are my these are my options I have. I don't really need to use them right now. I'm just giving you a heads up. Client, this will run on anything 
that has a player. I believe it will also run on host. I'll give you a warning about that. Server will run on ho host and uh, server as well. Is local player, if it's on the player object, will only run if it's a local player. Otherwise, this will be false. And this will become an issue later on when we separate the game piece from the network player. So again, we talked about coroutines last time. and I don't need 120 somethings uh, to check my input. So I'm gonna make another coroutine here. And I actually, I actually could put this in is local player and only spawn it from there. This would take off. Uh, this would take off time for the server, but it's possible the server might eventually need to use this code. So at the moment, I could put this. I could start this coroutine inside the is local player. Uh, but like I said before, it is possible that I am going to need to have the server run this. Here are my 50 milliseconds. And then here we're going to have our update code. There is one exception to this, and that is in update we are going to have to do camera code. And I want to talk about camera code because this has been a sore spot for many of students in networking game two or game two, which is networking, and I'll explain what happened. Like things go badly with camera. So we'll talk about this in a moment. All right, so, 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 what do I want to do? Let's, um, like I said, for this project, I could start the coroutine here and the server would not have to worry about running this. And that would take off the load on the server. And that's nice because we're going to do an authoritarian server. So the server is going to have to do a lot of work as it is. In this case, it's not going to matter. So I'm going to start the coroutine here in case the server, we decide we need to do something on the server. Um, and we're going to say slow update. So what I re recommend now for safe coding, um, there's a couple things that can go wrong here. Not, not in this particular case, but usually I would do a try catch. And I'm going to be a little bit sloppy here at the moment. Permit me a uncontrolled catch. And this will prevent some, sometimes there'll be initialization errors. There will not be any initialization errors in this particular game, but we'll talk about this later. We can get null exceptions here. So this is my pattern for doing a slow update. Then inside the try, I'll have if is server should the server need to do something if is local player uh, should the local uh, type today local player need to do something and finally I, if you need to, normally you don't, you know, if his client, and maybe you have like a graphical effect, uh, should the client have to do something. This does not mean local player. It could be, but if you have a game of five people, there will be four clients and only one of them will be a local player. So be aware of that. This is if you own the object, if that's you, and this is if you're not the server. So understand these are two different checks. So this is my general pattern for setting up a slow update in the, in the <clears throat> networking game. And we'll find out that uh, spawning a network, uh, spawning a game piece will actually go up here, but we'll get to that in a later video. So again, you don't have to do this, this exact style, but this is probably the easiest generic style I can think of and gives you the option. Remember all like this, this slow update will be run on all of your code. 
uh, whether it, or on all the players, whether it be host, server, client, local player or not. So we have to make sure our code goes in the right spot. So before I come back to that, or we'll come back to that in a moment, um, let's talk about the camera. So for some reason, this is a weird error that people have. I, th I There must be a tutorial out there that does this, and I don't know why. But what happens is people will attach the camera to the player object. When that happens, now you have a bunch of players, run, a bunch of cameras running around the scene, and you've got to deactivate which one is which. Most, most of the time, most of the time, you do not want to see what your opponents see. You only care about your screen. Therefore, the camera does not have to be, does not have to be networked. So I like if I'm the local player, I can grab the net camera and use it. And then on a different computer, a different network player piece will grab the computer or the camera and use it, and it will be fine. They are not going to be synced. The common mistake is to do something like this. Um, .x. They, apparently they made it so you could set x now. I don't know if that's a lie or not. I think it's a lie. <laughs> Um, we can use transform. I'll explain why. Dot position. Dot x. Yeah, I didn't think I could do that. Oh, no, I'm just not setting it right. Sorry. No, because it's read only. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes some some vector threes you can set, but that one you can't. So here we'll just set this to be. New vector three. This dot transform dot x. Uh, this dot transform dot y. And I think we're gonna make our z. I'll say five. It's gonna be a two D game. So why? Dot position. Okay, I'm sorry. I am not, I'm just getting late. Okay, so here we're gonna set the camera. Now this some might look similar to what you've done in the past and say it's single player games, but the problem here now is remember, everyone's gonna be running this code. So every player on your, on your game is gonna be trying to access your camera. The host, all the other clients are gonna be trying to access your camera. So if you put this inside, if is local player, this alleviates a lot of pain. Now, only if you're the local player will you control the camera. Since you are the local player on your machine, that means the camera is now yours. No one else will mess with your camera. You normally do not ever have to synchronize the camera. So I again, I don't know why this is such a common thing with the students I've seen so far, but I would not ever, ever, ever synchronize a camera. In fact, I would just use the default camera unless you really wanted a different type of camera and that would be adequate enough. But you just have to remember to wrap it inside is local player. Okay, so um, let's go back up here. We're gonna keep this pretty simple. Now I want to move my object. So I wanna move my object and I need to, control it. Well, I can't put the control right here. If I put control here, everyone will be able to move my object, which is not what you want to do. So once again, you have to wrap it inside is local player. So here I can do float hz equals um, input dot get axes raw uh, horizontal and float VZ. I'm not sure why I'm using Z, but I, you will find that the one flaw I have in coding is I do not follow my own conventions and that's, please have better conventions than I do. I apologize. All right. So here I just get my, uh, my floats 
And then normally, if this was a single player game, I would do my rig dot, you know, velocity equals, and then make my float. But I can't because what we're going to do is we're going to synchronize the position with a network transform. We haven't got there yet, but that's what's going to happen. So now the position of the player is going to be as game state, and we want the server to control all game states. Just like we want the server to control our HP variable, we want the server to control our velocity and our position. So what happens is we have to make a command. Remember, you can only make a command, well, you, you could try making a command on other objects, but the command will only work on the player object. This is gonna come back to be a kind of an issue later, but we'll get around it. So move me and we'll just take a, We'll just take some, we'll take two floats. Now, word of warning about commands and RPCs for that matter. You can only use primitives as parameters. Floats in strings, you can send strings. Um, I believe you can send vectors, but that's that's about it. Uh, and, and, and of course, your, your Booleans as well. You can send game objects if if I, let me see. I can send game objects as parameters if and only if they have a net ID and are instantiated. So We'll see that a net ID is a, uh, that means that the object will be synced over the network in some, some way or shape or form. And that's the only way that the, they can send the net, the object over a command. It's basically an integer value is with the net ID. So you can send game objects as long as they have a net ID and they have to be instantiated. So a, an error that was really tricky is we had a game object with a net ID, but it was a prefab. The individual sent the prefab in as a parameter and it would not work because it doesn't actually exist so that so that is a limitation on game objects i can send game objects in as long as they have a net id and they are instantiated they're not prefabs that's a big a big catch 22. so once i send this in i remember the server now what if it's a command this is a command label it goes over the function if it's a command this will only be run on the server so since i know it's on the server i know that my server has the rigid body so we're going to come down here and we'll say my rig dot velocity equals new vector three and we we'll do x and y right so we'll do h v and zero for z all right now this will move my object in the server and as long as i have a network transform which i'm going to talk about in a moment it will move it on the client okay we'll save that we're gonna be done with that for a moment now we're going to make our prefab so we'll make a game object we'll just make a let's make a sphere our spheres will be our heroes today um, and then we're going to add a rigid body so physics rigid body we are not going to use gravity um, and we are going to use interpolate i don't we haven't used interpolate before but we're going to use interpolate so our client is allowed to interpolate the movement in between updates. Then we're going to say add um, networking. Actually, better yet, we just add our script. Wait, 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 we have failure generating code. Why do I? Oh, I lied there. I missed one important detail. Sorry, sorry, let's come back to our code. If it's a command, it must start with capital CMD. I like putting underscores under it, so I know that this is a command move me. You do not need the underscore, but you do need the CMD. Sorry, I, uh, important thing I forgot. Going back here, this should go away. Come on. 
Uh, no, no, I don't know. Where? Okay, so I click on my sphere. And I'll just drag my network player over. Once I do that, you see I have a, my network player and I have my net ID automatically because it's network behavior. Here you have server only, which means it only runs on the server, only exists on the server. And here we have local player authority. We will never, ever, ever check this box in this class. This is my biggest soapbox complaint with the way the tutorials are done with networking is everyone clicks this and it's, it means the clients have full authority of their player, which means nothing's preventing the client from cheating or, you know, or altering the game state. To be fair, to be fair, that's probably not a big deal. But um, I want to demonstrate using a full authoritarian server where the server is the master of the game. And so we will never, ever click this box. The last thing I need to add is under networking or network, and then we're going to do a network transform. So one of the biggest issues with games and networks is you have to sync the position of all the different objects in your game. So in order to do that, you have to send all these um, sync fars or commands. Well, they set up a network transform to do it for you. The default send rate is nine times a second. Uh, movement threshold to send is 0 0.01. You could probably increase this or decrease this a little bit. Velocity threshold, I also decrease. Well, no, I actually keep this the same. Snap threshold would be how far it can move before or how far it can snap or be, how far it can go before it has to snap back to settings. Interpolate movement factor. I always get this one backwards. I think it's the it, it, the number or how quickly it will it will go to the the correct position. I want to say I usually use 0.5. I double check that. But rotation in this case we don't care. But we're not going to care about rotation. So we say none. This is a way to reduce network traffic. If you don't need it, you don't care about your rotation. Just make this none. If you do, then you have to you can set which axis you want. The idea behind having this option is purposely to reduce network traffic. And then it does not sync angular velocity by default. So if the, the speed of the angular velocity of the rotation is important in your game, then you need to sync this. Otherwise, it's not important. Uh, going back up to our rigid body real quick, we'll hit constraints. We're not going to have any rotation. So we'll just put our rotation on that. Now we'll go back to our prefab. We'll go to our sphere. We'll rename it to be uh, network player. And we're going to make a prefab out of it. We can delete it. All right, so we're gonna click on network manager. We're gonna drag our network prefab into our player prefab. So now every player that joins will have one of these created for it. So first of all, let's just see if the host works. That's the first test. So LAN host, this means you are a player and a server. LAN server only means this is just a, you're just doing the server, you don't have a player. LAN client means connecting. If I wanna test on the same machine, I can use local host. If I wanna test on a different machine, I have to type the IP address here for the host. The host itself can just hit LAN host. So we'll host it and hmm, I, I th let's see what happened. I, first of all, my object's there. I think my camera went into the ball. So I figure out what's going on there. Main camera, um, do a 3D, or my main, or I put my main camera in the wrong direction. I did, okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So let's go change that real quickly. Uh, so camera move is going to be negative five, pardon me, not five. I should have known that from graphics. All right, we run this again. The land host and a probably, so if I click, you can't see it moving because I have no frame of reference, but if I look on my uh, online, you'll see network player and hopefully I can move it. Oh, I'm not calling my command. Whoops. Let me. 
So now under here, I have to actually send my, I have to see, notice this did not work or uh, um, this didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't call the command. So here I call the command as if I'm just calling a function, but instead of running on the client or the local player, it will run on the server. So I save that and now I will run it again. Again, if I'm going too fast, please pause the video. And host. Okay, so now we'll go back to online. We'll click on my network player clone. And now you see I am moving left, I'm moving up, I'm moving right, I'm moving down. So now I have it, and my, my camera's moving with me, so it's staying in the middle of the screen. Eureka. Okay, so now how do I test for multiple connections this is a trouble this is a time consuming process but the easiest way is to connect and build and we'll say um first networking project dot exe oh no 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 let's do first we'll say we'll build a version of it And then when we build it, it's important to run the server on the editor and then rerun it and run the client on the editor. This will allow you to see both errors. It's very common to get certain errors only on the client. It's very common to get only get certain errors on the server. So you need to take turn, let the editor be both the server and the client. So here we'll do run windowed. We'll run it pretty small. Oh, yeah, we'll run it small. Play it. Okay, now I have this running. Let me see if I can... Can I get this over there? Oh, I'm having... Okay. So here I'll run it. So first we'll do server on the editor. Now the network manager, the style of game is anyone can join whenever. It's kind of like an online free for all. Now I do LAN client. If I was on a different computer, I'd have to type the IP address. This would only work if it was on the same network and subnet. It will not go through a NAT or a WAN. Since it's on the same thing, I just use LAN, LAN, local host, LAN client, and now you'll see that my ball's here, and you'll see I'm moving on this screen, and it's actually pretty, pretty good as far as the smooth. So, so far, so good on the smoothness. So I can run around, and then if I click on the server, I can move the server around. Notice that on here, the camera's focused on Oh, the other thing too is when you run this, you have to be in the offline scene. Uh, otherwise, if you start in the online scene, it will not actually start the game and all your network objects will not be there. Run host. Okay. So this is working. Okay. And then I will see. Oh. this <clears throat> this will be the client okay so now it's working the camera is following this one and now the camera is following this one so maybe I just had to reset this for some reason um, I'm not, I don't seem to be getting that area anymore either. So that was, that may have just been a one-time thing when I first ran it. It's kind of strange. Um, but now it's working as it should. So you shouldn't get any error sending commands on a host. The host will not actually send a, a TCPI message, but it will send a process message to try to mimic the latency. Unfortunately, host will always have an advantage over the client just because they don't have to deal with the latency of the connection. So now we have two things rolling around. That's great. We'll stop this for a moment. We'll get out of here. <clears throat> now things that are static, let me go to the online game real quick. Online. 
online. There you go. So first of all, we're going to add a directional light. There we go. And then we're going to add some cubes so we have a little more interesting world. Uh, uh, game objects, add three objects, cubes. Uh, and I'll go on scene. Okay. So now we have, and we'll file and save. Now uh, these cubes will be. Um, I should have actually added this. I, uh, they will have box colliders. So I don't know. If I don't. Yeah, we need to add components. Rigid body two D or rigid body. Sorry. Okay. And they are going to be kinematic and not use gravity. So they're just gonna be static. Since they're static and they're not moving, I do not need to have them synced. Save scene, save project, I'll go back to offline scene, and then I'll rebuild the project. So things that aren't moving or things that you don't care about being synced across the network do not have to be synced and therefore can reduce traffic if you don't have them. So here we'll host. Notice now I look, I've got some cubes. Remember this is a 2D game. So I, oh, okay, so I can, I can go through these. I don't have rigid bodies. That's, do I not, am I missing the Z? Is that what's going on? Oh, whoops, I have the wrong plane. Okay, so. All right, sorry. Uh, let's let's go fix that real quick. Okay, we'll go to a, the online scene. So yeah, these need to be on zero. The Y needs or the Z needs to be zero, and the Y can change, but not the X or not the Z. Okay, so now we'll save this back to our, uh, we'll kill this one. Now once you, ch if you change it, you do have to rebuild it. So it's not like the, uh, the scene will just know what the new scene is. Go offline and then we'll say file build run. We'll run it. And we'll run this. Let's be host. So now, there we go. Now I can't run through the block, so I have kind of a little maze here. Not really a maze, it's more of a set of blocks to walk around. But as I, if I join, join as a client, now I have this and I can see a little bit better what's happening. Notice I do have a tiny bit of latency. I kind of have this like weird little drift on my ball. That's the interpolation. I could make that a little shorter if I wanted to, but I think it's adequate now. But that that little drift right here, I let go and I go a little bit like let go. So I keep moving, let go. So I keep moving. So that little bit of drift is the latency in the network, even on a local host. Also, running it inside the editor is very very slow. But here I have I have no errors. Both are playing. Both client and server are playing nice. So. Now this is a, a good example of our first networking game. Next video, we're going to use this same project and we're going to add some bad guys to it. I haven't quite figured out exactly what I'm going to do, but we'll add some bad guys and maybe they'll uh, chase us around or do patrolling or something. I don't know. We'll see. But that'll be next video. Anyway, thank you for watching and I appreciate it. I hope you have the first networking game up. If there's a problem, please go back through, pause the video on the code if you got lost and... I will see you next time. Thank you.